Hello everyone, Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria here coming at you with a tutorial on crocheted towel toppers. Before I get started though, I want to thank all of my subscribers for being here and welcome those of you who might be new to my channel. This channel is a creative channel. It's going to be all about crocheting, sewing, paper crafting, as well as some other crafty things and refurbishing furniture. So if this sounds like something you're interested in too, I'd love it if you would subscribe, like, and share this channel with it with others. Um, don't forget guys, tap on that bell icon so you'll get notified when I post new videos. All right then, let's get started, shall we? Today, I'm going to, like I said, show you how I do my crocheted towel toppers. Um, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Um, this is just a single crochet, crochet stitch, so this is going to be a great uh, project for beginners too, if you're a beginner crocheter and you want to learn. This is a great one. Simple stitch, nothing confusing. And it's it's a project that works up quickly and you have a gift to give. I love these. I make them all the time. I have about 12 sets of these I need to get done. Um, I know it's a little early, but I need to get, get these done for, you know, the, the holiday coming up, 4th of July, Independence Day. So I'm getting, I got a bunch of these to make and I thought, why not? Why not make a video and just show you guys my method? I know there's a bajillion different ways. All right, so what we need is towels. I use cotton towels. These are nothing fancy. I got these at Walmart, it's just their mainstays brand, but they're 100% cotton towels. I have, of course, my yarn. I have a scissor, my sewing needle, some buttons. These are one inch buttons. I got these at Walmart as well. They come in a six pack, which is great because I get three sets of towels out of one of these. I also am using a 3.25 millimeter hook, which is a D, a D hook, and I'm also using an I, 5.5 millimeter hook. And this is optional, you don't have to have this, but this is an all. It, I love it because it's got a really nice sharp tip on it, and you don't have to... I tried um, doing it like with a sewing needle with my yarn attached, and doing that method, oh, I, I messed it up so much. So I got this, and I love this because um, it just makes it easier to poke the holes through the foundation chain when you're doing the, the first row of your single crochets across the top of the towel. Um, but like I said, this is optional. I know a lot of people will use stainless steel hooks or, like I said, the sewing method. If you want to learn how to do those, there's tons of tutorials on YouTube regarding those methods. This is just my preferred method, guys. All right, you, if you don't wanna use the same size hook, if you have another size hook that you prefer, I've used an H, which is a five millimeter, and a J, which is a six millimeter. And then I just prefer the I. I just like the way it looks. So this is just the one I use. So if you wanna grab your H hook, or your J hook, or your G hook, whatever you guys prefer, totally up to you. This is just what I do. All righty, anyway. Those are your supplies, so go gather them up, folks, and let's get started. All right, so to begin, we're going to make a slip knot, and I'm just going to show those of you who might be new to crochet how to do it. This is just, again, one method. This is just how I do it, but I wrap, I take my yarn, I wrap it around my finger once, then twice, the tail end. I take the loop in the back, bring it over the front. Then I take that back loop that we just went over and pull it around the tip of my finger. Then I insert my hook. We're starting off with the 3.25 millimeter hook, the D, and secure. All right, there we have it. Our slip knot done. All right, guys, get your towel. I just fold it in half the best I can and, and line it up the best I can down here to make it even. And up here at the folded edge, after we've folded it in half, this is the open edge down on the bottom here. Um, I start right here where the seam is that the manufacturer like sewed this edging on. I start right here, right on the inside of that seam. I go about a quarter inch down and I poke a hole. This, see, this is why I love this. Look at that. 
easy peasy lemon squeezy. I kind of twist it around. I don't know why. It's just my habit. But I kind of try to get a nice <clears throat> hole there. Look at that. Isn't that great? A nice hole. And it's perfect because the hook fits right through it. Go in from the front. And just be gentle. You know, sometimes you got to kind of manipulate it a little bit. You yarn over. Pull up a loop. And it can be kind of fiddly at this point because it's, you know, a little, a little sassy. But I take this tail end and I lay it right across the top of my project like that. And then I single crochet. There we have it. One and done. Let me get this out of the way. Sorry about that, guys. So you can see what I'm doing here. And that's it. One single crochet. And I just keep my, my tool close by and handy. And I, I try to keep it about a quarter inch down and a quarter, maybe about a quarter inch apart. So then I just scoot it over, poke it again. I'm sure I'm slow at this, at this row and it is slow moving in my opinion, but to me, this is the row. I mean, it sets the whole foundation, ha ha ha, no pun intended, for your foundation row. Um, I try to keep them nice and close and what's great is as you go along you don't have I always worried about the sewing method you know you have this nice crisp clear seam on there and it, this this sucker's not going nowhere let me tell you all right let me scoot this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here <clears throat> all right and you just keep going along about a quarter inch down about a quarter inch over I go across. Now there's no set number of stitches that I do. It just depends on the size of the towel. Sometimes I have 43. Sometimes I have 54. I, it doesn't matter. As long as they're consistent. The, the key is consistent. Um, my friend, she likes to do like where she actually marks it and measures it out. I don't do that. Um, it's just too time consuming for me. I just... I just kind of just go with the flow and just, oh, goodness, this is hard to crochet around a camera, guys. Having, having some struggles. Let me do that one over here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that mess. Wow, I've never had red heart split so bad before. Kind of surprised. Anyway. Um... Yeah, I, d I don't measure it out. It's just, I just, I can't. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered with it. So, there we have it. All right, back in that hole there. Pull up a loop. Single crochet. And this is just what I do. Set it all the way across. Like I said, no set number of stitches, nothing like that. I try to keep it an odd number, and you'll see why later on in the tutorial. Um, so if you're getting close to your other end and you're noticing, oh, I'm 52 and I don't really have space and I look like I can fit about six more, do five. Just go a little bit farther away and space it just a, a skosh farther. Um, it doesn't look bad, the finished results, but you do notice a, sub, uh, a more of a jagged, You'll see what I'm talking about. I'll show you when I get there. I think I have a towel set that I, I wasn't paying attention and I had a, an even number on my foundation row here. And I just, um, I was like, Ooh, that looks a little funny right there. What did I do? So I went back and I counted and I was like, Oh, the only thing I will say is when I am doing a set, I tried to get the same amount across this foundation chain on, um, foundation chain on this foundation row on both towels uh, as close as possible. You don't want one to have, um, you know, let's say 56 and then your other one has like 43 because they'll look a little bit different from each other. And then you'll have to do more decrease rows, which then makes the towel topper longer than the other one. So if they're hanging side by side, it it's off. They'll be off. You know what I mean? So continue doing this all the way across 
however, whatever your method is for doing this foundation road, if you want, if, if you have a awl and you're doing it this way, um, if you do the sew method or if you're using your stainless steel crochet hook and poking the holes through, go ahead guys and just do, do it all the way across and I'll meet you back over here when we're getting ready to end this row and I'll show you what to do next. All right, guys, I am approaching my last stitch here. I think I have about, I don't know, 43, I believe it is. Yeah, 43. I just checked my notes. I have 43 stitches across. Um, and this is the last one I'm going to do on my foundation row. And there we have it. 43 stitches you've gone I mean I'm not completely perfect I mean they're a little bit and look what I did I pulled one of the threads out a little bit um, but yeah I have 43 stitches across and now we're going to move up to the next row now we're done with this small 3.25 hook so I'm putting this away we're done with that one and if you decided to use an all we're done with that one so I'm gonna put those items away we don't need those anymore. And I'm grabbing my 5.5 I hook. And from this point, this is all the only hook we're going to do. Nothing else, no changing, no strange tools, nothing weird. And all you got to do is chain one and turn your work. Alrighty. And then continue on. We're going to do two rows of single crochet into every stitch across. So single crochet, go, in, go into this very first one, pull up a loop, single crochet. All the way across, guys, for two rows. You want to see something else I did? For crying out loud, look at that. I poked it there and I know this looks up close on camera it's like oh my gosh it's all holy and blah no I, this is just what I call it I don't know if this is true or not but I call it self-healing when you poke that hole through there once you get through it and the fibers will start to pull back towards each other and once you wash it and put it in the dryer and all that good stuff it's gonna be fine it's not gonna look bad at all what I love about this, let me just show you guys something real quick. What I love about this method is I've bought some of these towel sets before and this part down here, different methods, it's real um, loose and yarn everywhere and knots. I, and this to me just looks nice and clean. I just like the way that looks. It, like I said, it's just a personal preference. Um, just the way I like it. All right. Anyways, back at task at hand. All right, let me get that out of the way. Back to our single crocheting into every stitch across, folks. Do this for two more rows. So we've got our foundation row, and now we're going to single crochet all the way across two more rows. And I'll meet you back up when we get to that point. All right, guys, I am approaching the end of that second single crochet in every stitch across row. I've got the last two here. Now we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work. Now the next three rows are going to be single crochet decrease rows. So we go into the first stitch, single crochet, single crochet into the next stitch, so we have the first two stitches have a single crochet. Now we're going to do a decrease. Go into that third stitch, pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. 
Do not yarn over and go through. You go immediately into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through all three. And that's going to be the pattern all the way across. Single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. This is our decrease, so we go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Don't don't pull don't fit, complete this stitch, go immediately into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. And we just continue this all the way down. Single crochet, single crochet, single crochet decrease. And that's it. We're just going to keep going all the way down the row. Single crochet, single crochet, and then a single crochet decrease. This is the pattern until you get all the way to the end of this row and for the next two rows. Just continued on. When we get to the end of this row, I'm going to show you something. I don't know if it's this row or the next row, but when you get down to the end here, you're going to have three stitches left. You're just going to, on the decrease row, and you're just going to single crochet into all three of those. And a decrease. Yeah, it is this row. So when you finish this last decrease on this row and you've got these three stitches left, you just go right ahead and just single crochet into those last three. And then continue on, just chain one, turn your work, and do another single crochet decrease row. You're going to do that for this row and the next row. You can go ahead and continue that, and I will continue on off camera, and I'll be, meet you back up when we get to that point. All right, so I just completed my last single crochet decrease row. That should be the row, end of row five. So for row six, I got my, my row counter here. So for row six, we're just going to chain one. And row six is going to be a single crochet in every stitch all the way across. Now remember, if you're using a smaller hook, you might want to do more rows of single crochet because a smaller hook is obviously going to leave you a smaller stitch. I typically, like I said, use between an H hook, which is a 5 millimeter, and my I hook, which is a 5.5. And I, I think that that just leaves a nice size stitch, and it looks nice. It's a, it's a nice size for this towel. My recommendation is if you are using like a G hook, some people just like that tighter stitch. If you are using a G hook, you're going to have to improvise a little bit and just add more rows. We're getting to the point after this single crochet row where we're going to start, start alternating between a decrease row and a single crochet row until we have seven stitches left. 
So as soon as I complete row six here, we're just going to start alternating. So row seven will be a decrease row. Row eight will be a single crochet row. Row nine, single crochet row. Row 10, decrease row, etc. Until you get to seven stitches across. So starting now, we're just going to alternate. So this is my decrease row because the previous row was a single crochet row into every stitch across. So now I'm doing a decrease row. My next row will be a single crochet row. Next row, decrease row. So continue doing that until you have only seven stitches left. And I'll meet you back up at that point and I'll show you how to do the tab, the part that folds over the handle. When we get to that point, I'll show you what to do and it's smooth sailing from then on out. So I'll meet you back up. Keep doing your De your single crochet row, decrease row, single crochet row, decrease row. Just keep alternating until we get to seven stitches. And I'll meet you back up then. Okay, I've just completed all of my decrease alternating rows with my single crochet rows. And I have seven stitches left. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now all we're going to do for the next 15 rows is chain one, turn your work, and single crochet in every stitch across. 15 rows we're going to do this. Just single crochet in every stitch across, chain one, and turn your work. Like I said, this is a really quick, fun, easy project. It's relaxing. You can sit and watch a movie while you do it. Really no thinking or hard pattern to it whatsoever. Got to the end of that row. Chain one. That's my first one. Turn my work. And just keep doing that for the next 15 rows. Just single crochet in every stitch across. I'm going to go ahead and continue doing this off camera for my 15 rows. And when we get to that point, we're almost finished. We've only got four rows left to do after that. And I'll meet you back up then. Single crochet every stitch across. You're chaining one, turning your work. Right, I'm going to complete this off camera and I'll meet you back up in just a moment. All right, I am just about ready to complete row 15 of my single crochets. Got my last two stitches here. So your project will look something like this. You've got that base with the single crochet rows and decrease rows and then our alternating single crochet rows and decrease rows until we had seven stitches left. And then once we had seven stitches left, we just single crocheted for 15 rows. And now our next row is going to be our buttonhole row. So to do the buttonhole, like I said, we're going to be using that one inch button. So for a one inch button, we're going to chain one, turn our work, it's getting twisted here, and we're going to single crochet into the first 
three stitches. And then we're going to chain two. We're going to skip the next stitch and go into the next stitch for a single crochet and then single crochet into the last two stitches. So this is what your buttonhole row will look like. We've got the single crochet in the first three. We have the chain two. We skipped this chain right here down below and then we single crocheted into the next three. Then we're going to chain one turn our work, single crochet into the first three stitches, and now we're at that chain two space right here. So we're going to just go into that gap and single crochet once, go into the gap again, single crochet. So we have two single crochets into that chain two space. And then here is your next stitch. We're just going to single crochet to that stitch and then our next and last two stitches. But this is where you might get confused because we had chain not chain seven, we had seven single crochets all the way up into this buttonhole row. But what happens when we do that chain two and then the next row when we single crochet and then we do two single crochets into that chain two space, we wind up with eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we need to get back down to seven. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, single crochet into the first three stitches, and in the two stitches that we went into the chain two space, we're going to do a decrease, single crochet decrease, right there right in the middle and then single crochet into our last three stitches all right and then our last row we're just going to chain one we're going to turn our work and we're back down to seven stitches. We're going to single crochet two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And there you have it. Your 15 rows of single crochet. We did that buttonhole row and then two more rows. So at this point, you are done with your towel topper. Go ahead and cut your yarn. Get rid of that. And we're just going to fasten off. We're going to sew in this end. I use a yarn threader because I have a heck of a time sometimes trying to get this through the eye on my needle. Even with a yarn threader I do. We 
we're just going to weave in this end going just under these front these stitches here we don't want to be able to see it on that side so just go under the stitches here a few times I like to go all the way across my top row Oops. I like to go all the way across this top row and then when I get to this last one I don't complete this last oop, this last one I stop right here and then I just bring it here I've got to turn it this way I can't see <laughs> and then I just come back up and I go back and then just to make sure it's nice and secure I go back maybe if not all the way you know like Mikey from the crochet crowd says if you do it three times you can't pull the strand in three different directions at once and that just makes a nice secure From your yarn. There we have it. There's your crocheted towel topper, folks. I'm going to get my button ready. And to secure that button, see how the button roll hole is here? See how it looks like there's boxes underneath or columns. I count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I count down eight columns and then I count in that way. One, two, two, and three. And see how these two stitches are here in the middle? I place my button right there. So I'm going to get my button and we're going to do that together. All right. So like I said, one, two, three, four. See how you can see it from a distance? They look like columns here. You're going to count down eight columns. And you'll kind of know where it is because when you get to that eighth one, you'll start to see the the fanning out where it goes higher and higher you'll know kind of where that is and we're going to pick these two middle ones here and we're just going to place our button right in the center there just kind of hold it down and secure it I have about a six inch thread on my yarn needle you're just going to come up through the back here make sure you don't pull this too far through because you need to leave a nice long tail to weave in your ends <clears throat> Making sure that's nice and secure. Now you can do this as many times as you like. I'm just going to do it twice. And then when I get to this point, 
I like to tie one knot and tie one more knot just to keep it nice and secure. Then we're going to weave in these ends just like we did at the top here. We're just going to go back and forth, weaving in our ends on the back side only so you don't see it through to the other side. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll meet you back up in just a moment. All right, that's it guys. Your set of crocheted towels. Perfect for gift giving or anything like that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up. Please comment below if you have any questions or need me to walk you through any of the processes. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you always get notifications whenever I post a new video. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me for the tutorial today. Until next time, Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria here. Talk to you later.